Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And today I'm at a house off of Poplar Hill Road. Uh, Poplar Hill, a small and very steep street in the small neighborhood of Poplar Hill. And uh, we're here today celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Mount Washington Pediatric Hospital. And some of you are going to wonder, well, why are you standing in front of a house and not in front of the hospital? Well, I'm standing in the front of this private home. The, the homeowners have kindly let us uh, stand in their driveway and use it as a backdrop because this is where it all got started in 1922 100 years ago and we'll get to that in a second i'm pleased to be joined by a woman ann batten who uh, is a trustee of the hospital has been a trustee for uh, several years and also happens to be the granddaughter of the incredible woman who got this whole thing started but we'll hear about that in a second also all right well let's jump in and start our story uh, a little more than 100 years ago uh, and a woman named named Hortense Kahn. She was born in Reservoir Hill. She went on to graduate from Goucher College back then, uh, all women, of course, um, and then went on to do a master's uh, thesis, uh, a master's program, and uh, wrote her thesis on especially children's care and especially children's care after they were leaving the hospital. She had noticed that kids, while they were after a surgery or procedure, while in the hospital, they seemed to be getting better, but then often when they got home, they took a turn for the worse, especially if they came from poor families. Maybe they didn't have heat or hot water. Maybe they didn't even have adequate nutrition. She had learned about a place in New York called the Campbell Cottages, uh, which was a place between the hospital and home where kids would go and convalesce. They would have hot water and heat and, and nutrition and sanitary care. And it had a, a very good track record of helping kids along the way. And she decided that we needed one of those here. Um, and so she came back and started looking for a place to put it. That was her first step. And she found this lovely, lovely place, which she eventually called Happy Hills. And then she started knocking on doors. Um, she had known a number of physicians through her uh, graduate research work. She started knocking on doors. And one of the people who answered the knock was none other than Dr. William Welch. Now, those of you who are in the medical world or medical historians uh, will recognize that name. Um, he is called the Dean of American Medicine. He was the first Dean of the Hopkins School of Medicine. He started the Hopkins School of Public Health, the first school of public health in the country. And so if you had to pick just one person to answer your knock, that person would be William Welch. And he, in fact, uh, answered the knock um, and uh, thought that Hortense's idea was uh, tremendous. And he was an early backer. She soon uh, got other backers as well. She was a prodigious fundraiser and a tenacious sort uh, to boot. Um, at this point, she was all of 22 years old. Um, so off she went, uh, founded this convalescent home, um, and became one of its early trustees. Um, interestingly and notably, she never took a salary from the institution she started. She was secretary of the board of directors and worked uh, tirelessly for years, uh, but never, uh, never drawing a salary from it. Fast forward a little bit to the Great Depression and the trustees of the convalescent home here, Happy Hills, saw an opportunity. There was an estate over on uh, Whitlock, at, Whit, the Whitlock estate, I'm sorry, on Rogers Avenue that was up for sale at a good price. They were able to raise the funds and bought it, um, and that's where the pediatric hospital is today. It spent its first years here uh, in this house behind me and then uh, has been uh, has been on Rogers Avenue uh, since the Great Depression ever since. Uh, along the way, Hortense uh, got married. She men married a gentleman named Louis uh, Eliasberg, excuse me, Eliasberg. Um, incidentally, Louis was a financier in Baltimore. And if you are a coin collector, you will definitely know his name. He was one of the foremost coin collectors at the time. Um, people say that he is the only person person to have ever collected one of every coin minted in the United States, although some nitpickers have said that he didn't collect actually every single one, and that's because some coins were discovered after he died. But I think that's totally not fair, and I'm going to say that he collected every coin that anybody knew about uh, in his age. Um, but as his passion was for coins, her passion was for children's care and doing good in society. She helped the Baltimore Museum of Art and the Maryland League of Conservation Voters. She was on a national organization 
organization uh, bringing together Jews and Christians, uh, it seemed like her energy was boundless. By the time she died in 1949, I believe, the uh, home here, Happy Hills, uh, was going like gangbusters. It had, uh, was seeing thousands of children pass through its doors. Um, and it continued to grow, uh, treating everything from uh, heart disease to polio with exercise and nutrition and increasingly primary care as well. By the mid-1970s, uh, the uh, folks running the institution felt that they needed a name change, and that's when we got the Mount Washington Pediatric Hospital. And I'm going to wrap up to say that it is uh, going gangbusters today as well on its 100th anniversary, owned and operated jointly by Hopkins uh, Medical System and the University of Maryland Medical System, so pretty uh, two strong partners there. Uh, but I'm going to stop and turn it over to Ann Batten uh, to say a few words. All right, Ann, we are all yours. My name is Ann Betton. I'm the granddaughter of Hortense Can Eliasberg and very proud to be a participant at Mount Washington Pediatric Hospital, actually in a rather big way, having been on the board for many years and served as the chair of the foundation board. It's such a thrill to be here at the house where Happy Hills started. One of the sad things is that I never knew my grandmother. She died long before I was born. So I have no idea other than what we've uncovered over the past you know, five to 10 years in doing the research for the book that's coming out on the history of Happy Hills and talking with relatives. I tell you, it boggles my mind to think that a 22-year-old was able to grab the attention of these powerful, mostly men, and harness them behind her vision. I mean, she must have had an incredible passion and energy that they saw. As a child, um, we only knew Happy Hills, the white mansion on West Rogers Avenue. And I thought that's where Happy Hills started. It wasn't until, for me, it wasn't until about 10 years ago that I knew that this prior location existed. And it wasn't until a couple weeks ago, with Julie's permission, that we were able to come and take a look at the house for ourselves. And it's amazing. I never expected the house to still be standing. I mean, we're talking over 100 years old. And not only is it standing, but it's gorgeous. And there are aspects of it that I can recognize from photographs that were taken in the 1920s. It, it's like stepping through history. When I first uh, started at, in, on the trust, board of trustees for the hospital, we were still utilizing the white mansion and it's been since I've been involved as an adult that I've watched the main campus evolve from the ground to be a modern and up-to-date medical facility. We needed to be able to treat um, patients who had respiratory issues. As the years go by and the needs of the children change, the hospital has been able to pivot and address the needs of the children. And it's such a pleasure to see the impact that we have had on the community, on these kids. It's only gonna go up.